All right, well, we're going to turn our attention now to um, behavior genetics and, um, <clears throat> and a related area, <clears throat> uh, excuse me, uh, in terms of um, uh, evolutionary psychology itself. Uh, the, 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 what's pictured here to your left uh, is probably one that you're relatively familiar with if you've had some biology in high school or whatever. But um, <clears throat> if we were to uh, identify various areas here of this diagram, uh, we're actually we're looking at a cell. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, looking at a cell itself, you see the interior of the cell and the, and the, the brains of it, if you will. This is the nucleus. Uh, and the various component parts of the interior of the cell, the, the uh, little power plant in a sense. Uh, what you have here, which no doubt you probably recognize, is a chromosome, and what they actually look like uh, is X-shaped um, structures that are filled with DNA, a chromosome, and then <clears throat> uh, this is what actually makes up uh, the uh, strand, the double helix strand, um, that is called a gene. The chromosome is the actual building block interior. This whole structure is the gene that then is part of the uh, double helix of, of a strand of DNA. So <clears throat> if we were to define each, essentially uh, uh, the uh, chromosome itself uh, if you think of it as a uh, various parts of the building blocks in uh, terms of cell development, uh, it is the <clears throat> coiled chain uh, of the uh, DNA, which was discovered by uh, a couple researchers. Uh, and discovered that the actual structure of it was the what we refer to as the double helix. Um, but the coiled chain of the molecule DNA um, that is part of uh, what makes up us, makes us unique, um, then the whole idea then is that uh, we have uh, made up of these genes, which are the small segments in here, uh, genes are the actual um, building blocks uh, of the DNA molecules, and they uh, we have up to uh, 20 to um, <clears throat> 20k to 25k of these genes uh, in a DNA um, chain, if you will. Uh, two aspects of these, they are either active or uh, pat, uh, active or unexpressed. Um, <clears throat> uh, they're expressed and you see them, or they're inactive and they're not. So sometimes we will talk about recessive and dominant genes, and uh, oftentimes in people that are, for example, have blonde hair, blue eyes is a, is a dominant gene in them in uh, people with that. So essentially, um, we are interested in this, and, and <clears throat> we, we refer to this as the human genome. But increasingly, because we've gotten uh, in, uh, uh, greater and greater levels of computing power, um, <clears throat> Uh, greater levels of computing power, it has allowed us to actually map the human uh, genome before it would only have been kind of dreamed of, uh, whoops, computing, uh, computing power. Um, it would have only been dreamed of that we would be able to actually map the human genome. But um, we've gotten to the point now where many of the computers that you all have on your desktops um, is uh, of equal power as the ones that would fill an entire r room. So all of the things that are make us unique in terms of traits um, <clears throat> are, are essentially influenced by these genes. 
and they show themselves and, and their characteristics throughout a family. The, the thing to keep in mind and the thing to understand is uh, the biggest question is really how do we determine uh, differences and similarities, essentially. And one of the biggest answers to that question uh, versus similarities is what we have discovered as a result of twin studies. Um, <clears throat> and because, essentially, we have people who are um, uh, genetic uh, clones of each other. And so we can actually see, because they are identical in genetic makeup, we can see what happens when you have one uh, different environments that they grow up in if they're separated at birth. Um, we can also look at uh, what happens with the same environment and how they are treated, how they are perceived, how they perceive themselves. Um, and we can, in a sense, it's not necessarily a matter that we can actually vary it ourselves. But we, we can take what we have and make some conclusions based on what we find within people that are in uh, twin or are in adoptive studies. Or, and twins and adoption are the, the, the key kind of study points for us in trying to determine uh, just how much is influenced by uh, DNA, by genetic material itself. So, Essentially, uh, we also have the idea that um, we have not only identical twins, but we also have uh, uh, fraternal twins. And we can compare and contrast the kind of environments they are in, how they uh, interact with their environment, how their, interact, their environment actually impacts them, plus the genetics aspects of it are equally as true. So. Um, 